Well, hello today. We are doing a video, part three of Creepy World being renovated. As I told you, we're doing a video, and this is called Fast and Affordable. Building a haunted house fast and affordable. What does fast mean? Well, forget how long it took to build the walls and all that because they were already there. We didn't change any of that. The only thing we've changed is the interior. So this is a fast and affordable. And I want to explain a couple things to you. Why is it fast? Because all of our carpenters and all those people, we build mini golfs, we build laser tags, and that's what we're doing right now. We have a lot of orders for laser tags and mini golfs, and we're trying to get these shipped out. And we are going 24 seven at the moment, trying to get these uh, things done. And so the person that's helping us with the paint, um, trying to get this paint done, is also currently, anyway, the heck is going on here? It's pretty wild. Look at this, There's, for some reason, they've left this water on. They're like trying to flood the place. It's crazy. Holy smokes. I don't know where this is coming from, but it would be better going in that creek, that I can tell you. I don't know where this is coming from. Do you guys? This is pretty crazy. But anyway, now that water can go into that creek. That creek right there is a serious problem to Creepy World because it floods the space over here, which is no bueno. And where in the, where is that hose coming from? This is pretty crazy. I don't know, I gotta get to the bottom of this. But you can see, I'm walking on the hay ride and you can see, for example, we need to get in here. You know what's crazy? They have a sump pump in the creek. <laughs> they obviously are getting water out of the creek to, to paint, um, that's what I'm guessing. The water is for, but they never turned off the sump pump. So I guess I'm going to do that right now. There we go, off. So, hey, that's very ingenious. You know, you don't have water out here. So you pump it out of the creek. That creek is up at the moment, which is no good because if it goes over the top, it spills into Creepy World, and we don't want that. So, we definitely don't want that. And look at this, this is our Jaws Lagoon, and you can see that it's completely flooded. See, Amity Island welcomes you, right? right? And look at that, it's completely flooded. And we bought this boat off the river and it wasn't easy to get it here, I will tell you that. The, the jaws definitely attacked this boat and that's that. Now does anybody know what this is behind me? That is the facade. The last time that we were building a facade for Transworld, we didn't just build this facade. We built a whole entire 3D haunted house that we were going to display at Transworld, and Transworld was called off. So we have now installed it out here at Creepy World, and this will be the first time it's being used here in the Hayride. Prior, we had a Sleepy Hollow 3D um, haunted house. Now we have no 3D haunted house here at Creepy World. That particular haunt had been replaced as of last year into what we call the slaughterhouse. Now, I'm gonna go over to that slaughterhouse here in, a, in another video. That haunted house is actually really good, and that was another, what I would call, cheap, affordable, whatever you wanna call it, haunted house. In other words, it was built 
fast and affordable and it was really being built with the ability to buy props locally um, you know natural props and then fill them in all over the place and then and then literally doing the wall treatments the same way we're doing this monster mansion by using materials and um, doing it cheap but making it when you're finished with it it doesn't look like it's cheap it actually looks like you spent a lot of time on it but you really didn't and that's how we're doing this new one the difference is we didn't document that one we're documenting this one so I really think this haunted house is going to turn out fantastic I'm very excited about it um, we have to go get a bunch of props uh, that are coming in next week so next week we should have it basically painted by the end of Friday I would think it's probably going to be completely painted and it's going to also be all the props are going to be inside of it and it's going to be really close we're also going to be sending out all of our carpenters here next week and we're going to build this alleyway uh, with this coffin hallway so that's the plan and so you're asking or you're wondering why are you going to build fast and affordable just to finish what i was saying we are building a lot of mini golfs when you build these mini golfs you also have to go install them that means everybody's gone for a week and we have to go install oh man two we'll be gone three four weeks over the over the summer installing mini golfs so and laser tags so that's a problem so we have to what we call walk and chew gum so i had somebody come in last week to, to see give me a price there goes my phone you guys are probably used to this by now and um we had somebody come in and give me a price on building a facade for this new haunted house because i want to utilize the slayer animation so that's kind of the plan um if i get a bid and it makes sense we'll have the facade built by somebody else because we just don't have time um, as you can see we have built some of the coolest facades the haunt industry's ever seen because we took them to transworld and you got to see them and uh, they're all fantastic and you know where we stuck them all we stuck them here at creepy world so they basically come here to rot and die um, but they populate the hayride so whenever we were building all these facades for Transworld, we were actually building them for Creepy World, okay? So we actually built them in time for Transworld, installed them, deassembled them, and assembled them again. So a lot of extra steps there. And here's one of them right here. So this is what is the, the Psycho House. You can see one of the mistakes we made when we built it we didn't necessarily build it for the outside and that's kind of a problem but this this thing is pretty old and we'll fix it up a little bit and it has TVs that go in it and everything I think it still looks really good but it definitely needs some TLC and we'll do that you can see the sidings missing over there um, and we'll get to that so now let's go into creepy world and let's look at part three of making a fast an affordable haunted house and I want to stress the point affordable let's talk about that for a second how much money are we going to spend on this haunted house hmm if I buy the facade with all the animations and props that I bought with the labor paint I mean, it'll be less than a hundred thousand I mean it may be as be 80 um, that's not that bad actually when you think about it you want your guests when they come to creepy world next year you I don't believe in when you have especially when you have a haunt this big I don't believe in just going to trans world and buying some props and throwing them here and throwing them there I think you got to do something wholesale so when people come to your place they go wow this was not here and yeah you could buy a big old animation from somebody 
they're still not gonna realize that that's new unless you put it in a new setting. So that's what we do, okay? So at Creepy World, we replace wholesale an entire attraction. We build all of our marketing around the new attraction. And at Darkness, we strip out whole entire sections. In the past, it would be two, three scenes in a row would all go and they would be redone from scratch. Um, and we did that again this year. We took out a whole section of the darkness and rebuilt it from scratch. Um, so let's go in and see part three. Now it is dark in here, okay? And I don't have a light other than on my phone. Okay, so what are you seeing now? You're seeing the walls have been synergied and now they've been based gray. Do you see that? Everything's based gray. Now, when you come in here, you see this ledge? Synergy was put on this ledge by hand, okay? And so it's looking a lot better. And you see everything is now gray. You're, I mean, you're seeing it and you're like, I wish I had a better light. But do you see where more synergy was packed in this little gap right here? And you see right there? More synergy was packed in. The idea, do you see right here? That was put on by hand, okay? More was smeared on right there by hand. The idea here, folks, is to make it look like, you know, the whole thing is concrete. Now, you can also see we filled in the bottoms of these skulls with foam. And we'll take off the extra foam. But you cannot see inside the bottom of the foam. And then, you know, right here where this piece of foam is broken off, we pack some concrete in there. Okay? And that, that's what we're trying to do. Look at the door jam. It's straight up gray. Now, you look at this beam. And I can tell you that when we work on the darkness, we have some really cool people in there. And they were using... Um, uh, that other material, um, phew, golly, I can't even believe I'm forgetting it, but it's, we have it still at the darkness, we still use it. Um, the jack, or whatever it's called, uh, it'll come to me in a second. I have memory lapses like Joe Biden, <laughs> where I just forget. Um, but, you can see where we put on this beam a whole lot of concrete. So you can use the other material and it's really a lot better because you know it dries slow and you can sculpt it and you could make this look like a real wood beam or you can do it fast and affordable and just pack a whole bunch of synergy on it. You're gonna get a very similar look. I would say the other one is better. Um, but you know, this is a haunted house. You have to understand, see the beam now? with all the synergy packed all over it. This is a haunted house that's gonna be faced with a lot of weather issues. It's not inside. And do you see, once again, do you see all of the synergy that's been hand put on? You can even see it's wet right there. And you can also see, we've just taken some spray foam and sealed up the edge. So what would be next? Maybe is to add a little bit more synergy, and you can see right there, just hand smearing it on everywhere. Look at the door jam here, there's been more hand smeared on. I mean, look, I can only say it so many times, and we don't have to talk about it for forever, but you can see, look at that whole seam right there. So, basically this was sprayed out of a hopper, and then it, you come back, and you just hand trough it on. You can see it's really packed there because we didn't have enough vacuum for them. So we just sealed up the whole side with nothing but concrete. And that, that's what's been done here. Okay. One of the next rooms we're going to be doing, and we're going to be doing it heavily in here, is we're going to heavily trough up these walls. Now we can do this out of plaster, but we can do it out of concrete as well. Take a, a trough and literally trough it up really good. You can see... More synergy here. You can see a lot of it in here. Where it's nice and wet. See that? And then in here, where we get these really cool skulls that were made by 
see once again forgetting the name of the company because it's not that I don't know who it is it's just that because I want to think about it it makes me forget um, it'll come to me in a second but look at this room it's actually gonna be really cool and you can see all the paint everywhere so what's gonna be the next step here a little bit more hand trough a little bit more dipping your hands in the concrete smearing it all over but the next steps are gonna be to start putting curtains on and I say that because you know when you when you do the curtains out of uh, shredding and stuff it's actually better if they do get hazed up with uh, with the synergy uh, than not because um, it really gives them a nasty texture but uh, we're gonna start putting those in we're gonna be replacing all of that so everywhere there's a door jam door jam there door jam there door jam there door jam here there's another one there I mean anywhere that's a door jam you see right here okay do you see right inside of here and there so you would do it double one here one there you're gonna put in shredding everywhere and so we're going to get this done on the synergy side and then we got this animation over here so this animation came from scare factory um, I was gonna use this in the darkness I've had it for a while I bought it a long time ago and I've had it and never used it and <laughs> if I'm being honest it's not built very well um, but what are we gonna do to it we're going to plow concrete all over it and paint it from scratch and when we paint it yes when we put concrete on it we're gonna put it right over the skulls we're gonna put it over this we're gonna hand trough it on we're gonna do the whole shebang and make this um, crypt look like it's real like it's a real coffin this is a fast and affordable way to pretty much do anything and so this is going to go back into there facing the customers who walk this direction and they're going to walk through a maze of coffins <clears throat> so so that's where we're at that's um, part three to this video was to get the synergy on and I want to uh, mention this too do you see this stuff right here and that sign that's no good and that plywood that's no good whatever okay keeping your space clean and getting stuff in the trash mentally impacts the people working on the project Hey, what's up? It mentally <laughs> it mentally affects the people working on the project. When everything is nice and tidy and clean, it makes people feel like, oh, we're getting closer to getting it done. And that's the way you got to think about it. And somebody's doing something crazy across the street, I can tell you that. So um, keep everything nice and clean keep the trash and debris in the trash can I stress this every day get this stuff in the trash in the trash in the trash um, so right now we have brainstorm making a whole bunch of really cool banners that are gonna cover a lot of stuff especially on our selfie museum the the banner they made um, is phenomenal I think it's one of the coolest things I've ever done and so that thing goes from zero to hero in five seconds just by putting a banner on um, so that's gonna be really cool and I'm gonna show you a trick on on putting banners up to make them actually look good because when you look at these they're just kind of hanging there they don't look that good I mean it looks better over there because it's nice and f flush okay but with the way that we're going to put the banners on the selfie museum is going to be like a whole nother way to do it. You're really going to like it. And I'm going to show you how to do it. We do it all the time for our mini golf customers. When we do banners for them, uh, we frame the banner on the wall, which gives it a whole nother level perspective. And that's another thing, you know, when you're trying to do something fast, you can do banners. But they look bad when they're just on the wall. So if you actually take the time to frame them on, specifically with like rough cut cedar, and in the case of the banners over here, we're gonna put 
uh, rub cut cedar on it and then we'll spray in concrete because it's going to be a castle look and it'll really look really cool and you know another thing you could do if you really are trying to go crazy is you could put like 2 by 12 on the bottom I think you could get like a um, you know a 2 by 8 or 2 by 10 and then a 2 by 6 and step it down then spray it in concrete it'll actually look like stones like you know like a the footing and then of course but the biggest thing is you got to go up the sides you got to go up both corners if you're trying to keep that look going but we're going to do it we're going to show you here on the channel so there you have it folks creepy world part three when do i think this thing's going to be done well we have to pull the painter off the project because we got to go down to the black light attractions and we've got to paint mini golfs sometime next week I think it'll be painted. I think the coffins will be in. And I think we'll be putting the props in. And it's going to go from what to wow. That's pretty freaking cool. Pretty, pretty fast. That's what I think is going to happen. So we're out here at Creepy World. Our big new attraction is that one and this haunted selfie museum. Now, you know, let me walk you over here. This is our ticket booth and we do it out of a, an actual trailer. And you can see it's wrapped and everything, but this is the queue line to buy tickets. Seldom is it ever filled because of selling tickets online. Um, seldom, when I say seldom, I mean very seldom. Is it, and we just cut the grass in here as you can see. We have to cut the grass like every two weeks or it'll just get out of control. But the people come in over there and then this is the line to buy tickets. You know, even on our busiest day, we only had one ticket seller. Um, and maybe I filled in here and there. Um, but most people are using credit cards and buying their tickets online. And even when they come here, they're still using credit cards, really, to be honest with you. It's pretty much like an all credit card business now. After they buy their ticket, they go this direction. And we're missing the signs on here. We have them, we're gonna put them up. Regular tickets go this way. Fast passes go this way. Now I'm gonna show you something when you're trying to figure out your queue lines. But look at this. And these do fill up, <laughs> okay. And I know we're in trouble when the, li uh, the lines go out of the queue line. You don't ever want that to happen. But when it's not super busy, and by the way, there's the selfie museum there. That is our movie theater there. But whenever it's not super busy, obviously we don't want everyone walking through these line, these queue lines. So, um, when it's not super busy, we have these chains right here. See the chain? So that chain just stays open so they can come in and go down. If it gets super busy, we just chain it and then you got two big more, you know, two, two big massive uh, areas additional. So see, this is the fast pass line right here. So if you got a fast pass, and you can see the fast passes are very long. We can hold a lot of people, okay? And then if you're in the, and then you know what this is right here? This is the VIP ticket. Like, so if you buy a ticket and you get to go in right away, that's what this lane is for. See this right here? This is attached. So we bring them over here and they get to go straight shot right in. Now, if you're in the regular line, you will continue on this way, as you can see. You continue on this way, and then you enter this queue line over here. In that area, and that was where we did a video mapping show, but last year we did a stage show. This year we'll probably do another stage show, or we were thinking about doing wrestling, but we don't know yet, but that's gonna go over there. So then you would go through all of these lines, here 
and we cover all the walls with signs promoting the other haunts, promoting the escape rooms, you name it. And then when you get to here, you know, we're scanning people in this row right here. After you've been scanned, and you'll see the fast pass comes through here, VIP comes through here, regular general mission comes this way, then this is where you start. Once you've passed this point, you're scanned, you go around, and they wait another line up and then into the first haunt. Um, some haunts have two, some haunts have two haunts back to back, meaning like you come out of one haunt, you go straight into another one. Other ones are one haunt and then there's a queue line and then another haunt so we can stop and break people up. So this is like haunt one. It's built out of trailers, believe it or not. And this is a one-off haunt, meaning like when you come out of this haunt, man, we gotta get back here and cut this grass. But when you come out of this particular haunt, you get put into another queue line. And I'll show you. And here's another queue line. And the grass. <laughs> And it needs to be cut like something ferocious. So there's TVs that go in there. There's lighting and everything else. And this is a queue line for that haunt. When you come out of that haunt, it goes straight into the next haunt with no queue line. And then it dumps into the hayride queue line. Now let's look at that queue line. Because it's kind of interesting. Because this is a, a confusing spot in the haunt. What we did many years ago was we took the hayride off the regular ticket. So when you buy a ticket to Creepy World, you're buying a ticket to the haunted house. If you want to add the hayride, you can. It costs extra. So see, this is where you come out and it's sealed up for the, from the third haunt. And you get to here and it says, hayride that way. And then it's going to have a new sign that's going to talk about the Monster Mansion. And it'll say, go this way. So if you have no hayride ticket, you go that way. And then you see there's another queue line. If you do, there's another queue line in here. And this is uh, another thing that we do with the queue line. You'll see there's lots of chains. So they can be removed. So on a slow night, you can go straight over and in. And every other pole has uh, chains so we can add two lanes four lanes six lanes eight lanes for the hate ride i don't know does that make sense so there you have it there's the video for today i hope you enjoyed it um, i'm doing videos out here for a reason our plan is to open creepy world for the trans world 2000 and 25 that's the plan um, so we're on here working on it with the agenda of setting it up and then after Halloween we're going to figure out what could we leave up that's what we're gonna that's what we're gonna try to do okay so that we have a snowballs chance in hell to open it and let me tell you something, and I want to say this very clearly. At the Eastern Haunters Convention, you had like Markham, I think it's called Markham, and I heard great things about it, I heard it was fantastic. Um, you had Markham's Haunted Trail, I think it's called, open for that show. And you're probably saying, well, how can they open, Larry, and you can't, because that's an all outdoor haunt as well. Well, let me explain, let me be clear, okay? Trans World happens at the beginning of March. The EH show happened basically six weeks later, okay? So if Markham, and I'm using them as an example, if they started working on their haunt to get it ready for the EH show, they could have probably started, you know, beginning of March, and they would have had eight-ish, let's just say eight weeks of pretty decent weather to work on their haunted house. With the show being at the tip of March, what's the month right before March? It's February. And I can tell you 
that uh, it's cold as hell and that area where Markham haunted place haunted trail is it's super cold that's for sure I want to be right over there. I want to talk to you. Hold on a second. And uh, there's where our... That's a special entrance to the hay ride over there. So we can get our hay wagons in and out. It is really like a little mini amusement park. But the point I'm trying to make is that if you're doing something like that, you know, and, and, and you're going to have the event at the, let's say at the end of April, you have more time with decent weather. If Transworld was in St. Louis in April, middle of April, end of April, I would 100% do it, <laughs> okay? I would 100% do it. I would be out here trying to make it happen, okay? Um, you just put a whole bunch of people on it and you don't build any new haunts, you don't do anything, like you just focus on trying to get it reopened. Most of these outdoor haunts, these hay rides and whatnot, I can assure you, I can promise you that they're not working out in the snow on their hay ride or their haunted trail or whatever, okay? Now, I say that and then somebody's gonna put a picture of some crazy person doing just that, I'm sure of it. But we, we all know that you're primarily not doing that. You might be fixing animations inside of a barn, inside of your workshop. You might do something here or there. You might drag something out there. But actually working on it, why would you do that in the winter? Because your attraction takes a beating in the winter. Beating like things are getting snowed on, rained on, frozen. <sighs> You gotta wait until the winter's over and then you start. And so for Creepy World, with the weather, February is the coldest month in St. Louis. It's absolutely the coldest. So that's the worst time for us to get out here and, and even attempt to make Creepy World um, ready to go for Transworld. But we're gonna try and that's going to require us to leave a bunch of stuff out in the weather it's going to require us to tarp everything like super super good and as soon as we get a break in the weather we're going to have to literally send 10 12 people out here and just go hog wild nuts the other thing is i gotta talk to the fire department and the building inspectors out here to to ask about doing a tour for the haunted house industry they're probably gonna say they don't care but I still gotta ask and see and um, and we'll go from there so anyway from creepy world at the beginning of trying to get everything back together um, and you're seeing the condition it's in now and hopefully you'll see the condition it's in when when we say hey this is ready to open <sighs> that's the plan you know the other thing I'll say too about creepy world is if I was going to change a haunt out here or for or, or do something along them lines I would have to strongly consider doing it directly after Halloween in other words the weather's not that bad um, in November and December and so theoretically I could come out here and work on stuff and I could theoretically come out here and change a haunt or something possible there's so much planning that has to be done here uh, to try to open this place. But that's the goal. That's what we're going to try to do. And we're also going to try to renovate the darkness as well. Which is why I've already started it. And <coughs> so we'll see. But um, And we've already done the lamp. It's already done. We didn't renovate it before Transfer. We did it after Transworld. <laughs> okay, I know that sounds backwards. But we didn't have any time to do it before Transworld because we only worked on the darkness well anyway thanks for watching the video make sure you like and subscribe we did get up to i don't know we, we added three about 300 new subscribers in the last month yay you know we have now one almost one million subscribers on tiktok we're at uh we're like 70 
thousand from a million. Like, what an achievement. Like, I never expected that. So, and we're climbing on Instagram too. So, I'm really excited about that as well. And we're going to do a whole video talking about my strategies for utilizing your social media to build your business. That video is coming soon. Till then, from Creepy World, we'll see you real soon.